You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? Mike from the Moose on the Loose. I hope you are doing well on this Monday. How was your weekend? And happy Father's Day. Um, late, but still, I mean, uh, had a pretty nice weekend on my side, uh, a lot of soccer. I mean, we, I, I coached two soccer games for my son and then we hopped on the car and then we watched the CF Montreal play. So that was a, a, a great weekend, a lot of fun. And yeah, so back to business today. Um, today I want to talk about an all Canadian problem. Um, if you're Canadian, you definitely have this problem where you probably have too many investment accounts. You have a RRSP, you have a TFSA, maybe a non-registered account, and then probably that you worked at some places. So maybe you have a locked-in RSP or Lira account. Um, maybe you're getting older and you're uh, thinking about transferring your RSP into a RIF. And on top of that, you manage your spouse accounts. So now you have like maybe seven, eight, 10 accounts, different accounts, like US, Canadian, kind of crazy, right? And, and a lot of investors, they struggle with how to manage the holdings in those accounts. So it could be ETFs, it could be stocks, it could be mutual funds, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's all about how do you manage all of those accounts that have like different size, different rules, different taxation, and then you're trying to get something that is relatively similar. So the first reflex a lot of investors have is they're thinking, okay, so imagine I'm going to take the example of having stocks because this is what I do with my portfolio. But if you have ETFs or mutual funds, you'll come down to the same struggle. So imagine that you want to manage between 20 to 30 companies. That's your like kind of like portfolio, ideal portfolio model. Well, if you have like seven to eight accounts and then you would like to replicate the same 20, 30 stocks in each account, that means that you're going to be up to more than 100 transactions to build those accounts. Uh, that's add up to a lot of fees, which you don't want to pay, right? Because at this at this point, you're better off having like just a, a global ETF and it's going to be a lot better. The other thing is, it's going to create a lot of time consuming. Whenever you want to buy or sell another stock, you have like seven, eight transactions every single time to do it. Um, it depends on how much you have invested in those accounts because maybe your TFSA is around like 50,000 or 100,000 and then you have an RSP of like 400,000. So of course, it's going to create more distortion and then you skipped on all the tax optimization because if you're trying to replicate the same portfolio in each of your accounts, not going to be great for tax optimization because they have like different tax rules. And again, I'm not a tax expert. I'm not an accountant. So I really tell you my number one advice when it comes down to taxes, go see a tax professional, like talk to your accountant and make sure that you understand which type of holdings is better in which type of account in your situation. There are some rule of thumbs that could help you out. But seriously, if you don't do it personalized based on what you have in your situation, you may end up having some um, like some stuff that don't belongs in some accounts. So having 100 transactions, having like too many like duplicates accounts, like it makes your life easier on the one side because then when you open your brokerage account, wherever you look at any type of account, you will have like the same asset allocation, the same sector allocation. You will feel good about that. And the returns from one statement to another will still also be coherent. They're all going to be pretty similar because you will have pretty similar, the same amount of position, like the same position and the same weight for each stocks. The problem though, is the fees, the tax optimization, and, and having to manage this mess of like dozens of transactions each year, kind of like defeat the whole purpose. And it will create a lot of paralysis by analysis. You will not be too sure how to move. And, and you may end up skipping some trades that you should do, but you're going to like skip them. But there's a solution. There's a solution for that. And it's it's great because it's like a literally a five minute solution that you can solve this problem and then keep your focus at the right place and have a clear strategy 
keep it simple, and actually spend less time managing your portfolio and more time enjoying life, which is pretty much the, the, the deal here, right? We, we work, we save, we invest, and then in the end, we want to enjoy life. So you don't want to spend your Sunday um, afternoon like playing around with an Excel spreadsheet. So the solution is called the Global View, and, and some brokers offer it. Uh, I have created this uh, feature at Dividend Stocks Rock, my membership website, about a year and a half ago, I think. Uh, it's been a while now. Um, the key here is to be able to combine all portfolios, all accounts that have the same goal. So of course, if you have like a non-registered account that is for like rainy days or to buy a, a rental property or vacation property, you're not going to to use this one in your global view. You're just going to select the specific accounts that will fund your retirement, for example. So all, if you have like a TFSA, an RSP, an unregistered, and then a Lira account, and they will all fund your retirement, well, the best way to do it is to look at a global view. So the global view will show you the addition of all your portfolios together for showing one asset allocation and one sector allocation. So you keep things clean and tidy. You can have 30 stocks across your seven uh, accounts. So most of your accounts will have maybe two, three, four positions. That's it. And not more than that, which is great because then if you want to buy more of Fortis, you know that your Fortis is in your TFSA. So you open your TFSA account, you buy more Fortis and there you go. It's done. You don't have to buy Fortis into five different accounts. So it's going to keep your transaction easier and it's also going to show you how you are globally invested, which is usually a big pain point for a lot of Canadians because you go, you go a little bit here, a little bit there, and then in some portfolios, you will have some ETFs, some others will have like mutual funds, some of them will be like all in stocks. And when you put everything together, you don't know exactly which kind of recipe you're cooking. And that could be dangerous. You could eventually be overexposed to a specific sector or not even follow your asset allocation strategy because it depends on, on your risk tolerance, how you deal with volatility. And, and if your goal is to have like 50% of your portfolio in, in fixed income, so like bonds or GICs, you know, like the safe stuff that generates like interest and is like not moving much. Well, you want to have that part into your tax sheltered accounts. You don't want to have that part into your non-registered for most people. Again, not tax advice here, but in general rule of thumb, you want to have your higher interest or higher dividend payers in tax sheltered accounts. So if you spread the same portfolio across all your accounts, you're going to skip on that tax optimization. But if you are using a global view, you can decide, okay, so I want to have like 50% that paying high interest. This is all going to be like maybe like 100% of your RSP. But then when you will look at your non-registered, it will be 100% stocks. And then you will eventually have what you wanted in terms of asset allocation, which is great. Uh, the only downside of using a global view like this is to make sure you do not look at your statements, individual statement returns. Because after like six months in, if the US market skyrocketed and the Keen market did not that do that well, and all your US investments are your in your in RSP to avoid withholding taxes. So you compare your RSP that is mostly US versus your TFSA that is mostly Canadian. And then you're going to start thinking, man, I should sell all my Canadian stocks and replicate my RSP account in all my other accounts and then just like liquidate my TFSA and make a copycat of my RSP allocation instead, which is a terrible idea from tax purposes, but also because now you're playing uh, Monday morning quarterback. You're just looking at what happened and then you make it obvious in your head that it was the right place to be. And then going forward, you're going to modify that. No, like the global view is your strategy. So if you determine that you want to have like 30% of your portfolio exposed to the US market, well, a great place to have that 30% is in your RSP. So when you look at your RSP allocation, maybe you're going to be like 75% of your, your assets will be in the US market, but it's going to be compensated by a higher percentage of Canadian 
exposure in your TFSA or in your non-registered. So again, playing around with the global view only and ignore all the other statements. So then you have like one return and that return is for your strategy. And that return is coming from the global view, not from individual accounts. So as long as you have that in your mind, you're going to have a clean, tidy portfolio like 30 holdings across all your accounts and you're going to skip that paralysis by analysis by wondering in which account you should be holding what. So Moose, I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. I hope that I've given you like a pretty good idea to solve this classic Canadian investor problem. And we're going to talk again tomorrow. So until then, don't forget to stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to this podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.